What's up guys, welcome back to another Lazy Goldmaker video. So in this one, we're doing the September market review. So a lot of things have changed since uh, since August, as we'll, as we'll see. Um, and yeah, a lo loads of things to talk about. Definitely looking different than it was in August, primarily due to, to uh, the Corthite uh, crystal price collapse. Um, which me has both good and bad components. Um, but yeah, let's dive in and take a look. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a look at some region daily summaries from the Undermine Journal um, to take a look at some key items, some key item types, and then we'll dive into um, into the profession windows on my realm specifically to see how this actually looks on a single high pop, very high pop realm. But first, we're going to look at um, at some of these items. We have the Corthite crystal here uh, over the last month. What have we seen? Well, we've seen the quantity absolutely explode. Uh, when they hotfix the drop rate, you can see that the quantity literally more than tripled and the price collapsed. It went from 1700, 1600 region market value at the beginning of, uh, or at the at roughly the beginning of August down to 200 gold. Now it's almost worthless. Um, so absolutely huge collapse. What's very interesting is uh, on this next one, because we're going to look at one of the most popular rank 6 legendaries, the Shadow Gas Ring, rank 6, um, which obviously also has gone down in value quite significantly from about 183k um, at the beginning of the month and down to 95k. But that's just half. That's about half. So this one has been cut in half the price. But the Corthite Crystals have gone down by a factor of almost 10 now from 1700 to 200. Um, so that's quite interesting, at least uh, definitely what that tells me is that on a lot of realms right now you can make big, big money from your um, rank 6 legendaries. That's what this is telling me. Um, this is looking absolutely fantastic um, because Corthite Crystal was by far the biggest cost component. So if everything else has stayed the same and Corthite Crystal prices are down by about to about a tenth or one eighth of what they... Uh, what they used to be, this should be very, very profitable right now. Um, so, um, not so much on my realm. If you're on the super high pop realm with loads of competition, then you're probably not going to be swimming in it, where I'm making roughly about 15% profit on these. But if you're on a small pop realm, then yeah, this is going to be a lot better. Uh, next up, we have the um, Chained Isle, Crafters Mark of the Chained Isle. I picked one of the rings, dual crafting stuff, sells really well here as well. Um, the Quick Ox sign, this is the item level 230 stuff you get from rank 4. You get the recipe from rank 4 with the Archivist Codex in Corthia. So at the beginning of the month, the region value was about 13,000, as you can see here. And it's about 10,000 now. So it's gone down a little bit, but not that much. And I find that this is still holding significant value. And this is just the average price. There will be some stat variants that typically sell for a lot more than the others. Um, I've been seeing the same trend. In fact, in many ways, the jewel crafting is the most competitive one. So I'm getting much higher profit margins on stuff like blacksmithing. And uh, in particular, uh, I haven't done much leather working and, and tailoring. But um, overall, the crafters market of the chain dial market is looking still really good. And with how much worse legendaries are now, this is actually worth your time. Whereas before, like you should literally just cancel scan legendaries. If you could cancel scan rank six legendaries, nothing else was even remotely as profitable. But now with that being a lot less profitable, you can now go and do other things like spending more time crafting chain dial gear and posting that and that's going to give you a lot better return on your time investment than, than legendaries were so that's uh something that's really good actually next up enchanting um it's been a slow decline it hasn't changed much but if you are just looking at one of the weapon enchants here the sinful revelation was about 400 gold at the beginning of the of august it's about 300 gold now so presumably material prices have also gone down a little bit um but overall, I find that enchanting is very uninteresting. It's generating like a couple of thousand gold a week, probably, if you do it, if you keep a bunch of enchants on you and just post them. Uh, but uh, this is not, it's not a profession to get you rich. The main reason to have it is really just for the enchanted materials, and that's still the case. Um, missives, they, the missives are interesting because they are a lot more up and down in price. Uh, even on the region value, and not don't even get me started on, on the single realm. Look at this. 
completely sold out and reset up to 900 gold. And I'm sure people are buying because that's not that large of a portion of a legendary cost. You're willing to pay 500 extra for, for a missive. So missives are interesting, definitely a market to pay attention to if you're in it. There might be reset opportunities here. Um, the price has gone down a little bit, but I mean, it was 600 at the beginning of the month and it was 600 four days ago uh, on the region value for EU. So definitely um, an interesting market and something to that where you might be able to eke some, some extra gold out from doing a little bit of min-maxing with your... Uh, with your materials and when you post and stuff like that. Um, very surprisingly large amount of varia price variation here. Uh, I was shocked when I saw this on my realm even. Um, but you can see here, like, when the auction house is, is relatively light, there are opportunities to reset. Like, right here, there's 400 on the auction house for about 200 each. Um, so just buying all that out, that's not that much gold. That's like, what, 80,000 gold. Uh, many people will be able to to flood that, and maybe you don't even have to buy all of it. Maybe it's enough to buy 200 of that, um, which is uh, not even going to be that much. So there are definitely uh, definitely opportunities um, to to do resets, like people did right here and reset it up to a thousand gold, and it took a while before it it went back down. It actually hasn't reached 200 until this week again. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you're keeping the price this high is going to entice people in, as you see what happened here. Someone did a reset up to 800 and f supply just flooded in this time. And then another huge supply influx on Monday and the price went down uh, to 200 and it's probably actually ripe for a reset right about now. Someone might have already done it, but uh, um, yeah, this is the perfect time to reset. Maybe I should go do that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that, run and do that now, but definitely that's something you can do with, with, uh, with an item that shows this amount of, of variation uh, on your realm. Lastly, we're going to look at alchemy. Well, we'll use flasks as like the, uh, the, the bellwether here. Um, and it's been like the very predictable, very, very slow measured decline. It was 800 at the beginning, around 800 at the beginning of August. It's 724 now, so it's just been trending very slowly downwards, which is what happens when people just finish their, um, they finish their Sanctum of Domination progress goals. They might be finishing Keystone Master, and that's what they care for. Now they're just like doing a couple of weeklies uh, to keep their world going because they're missing one or two 252 pieces. Um, so yeah, that's what uh, what we expect to see. This trend is probably going to continue until 9.1.5. And you should probably see something similar um, on a specific realm basis, just like we see here on Draenor, which has been trending downwards. And then there are some small, there can be some small reset opportunities around the the reset day, um, but nothing major. And then just supply falls in and it's back to, to business as usual, pretty much. But business as usual is slowly declining. So that's sort of the overall thing. I think you can make money with all of the major markets right now i think with the uh, with the fact that legendaries are not as profitable as they used to be um it makes a lot more sense to branch out now i think a lot of people will do that so that's going to have multiple effects number one like there probably should be in theory less competition on the legendaries because more people should realize that okay it's not might not be worth cancel scanning as much for like 3k profit per rank six um i'm now better off also doing some other things instead of just cancel scanning rank six at least that's what i've realized that should mean that we could see more competition in other markets um but um so if you're someone who's just been doing alchemy while the rest of us have been doing legendaries you should probably see a, a slight increase in in competition uh but overall it's now the time to branch out into like literally everything if you can um I think doing any any market that's not legendary or spending more time on any of those markets right now makes a ton of sense. Personally, I've started doing more chain dial gear. I'm also planning to uh, do some large restocking sessions for cosmetic uh, mounts. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, I might even look into inscription. I'm not going to do enchanting because I think it's just too low value. But I might do some inscription again, um, and uh, I might take another look at alchemy, but I doubt it. I don't much like how alchemy functions on on retail in terms of like the the absolutely incredible amount of cancel scanning you need to do to really make uh, gold in that market it's sort of similar to legendaries but uh, the payoff is smaller i could bother i could be bothered doing it for legendaries but i'm not going to be bothered doing it for much else um 
yeah, so that's sort of the overall view. And then we'll take a look at some of the professional windows as well to on my realm specifically to see what specific recipes are good and um, right now. So let's uh, dive into the first one. All right, so we're here with Alchemy. And uh, this is a pretty encouraging sign for me. I don't tweak my uh, settings because I don't do Alchemy. I made a video on what you need to do with Alchemy to tweak your, uh, where you need to tweak your material prices to make sure that you're using the correct costs. But what I'm seeing right away is that a lot of these recipes are showing green, which means they're showing a profit even without me having done anything to the settings. And the profits are looking pretty juicy as well. Um, like this 77 gold profit on 172 gold crafting cost for a potion of phantom fire is absolutely fantastic. Uh, spectral agility, spectral int. There's definitely opportunities with the potions. They look quite good. On my realm, flasks not so much. Flasks have a thinner profit margin generally, um, so you could do those. But uh, yeah, really have to uh, to buy your materials when they're cheap if you're doing flasks. Um, so that's about it for um, for alchemy. It's actually looking surprisingly good. Hopefully, you have a similar um, similar experience. But do make sure that you check out the video on how to make alchemy show your uh, the actual profits in the TSM. It should be linked up in the corner uh, right now. And uh, go do that before you do anything big in in alchemy. Next up. The worst profession in the game, engineering, and uh, well, it's literally exactly the same as last week or last month, I should say. Wormhole generator shadowlands is the only relevant recipe here. Everything else is a waste of time. If you have this, I'd suggest keeping these on the auction house. Very nice profit. I should actually start keeping these on the auction house myself uh, because they're not hard to craft, and uh, just keeping like four or five near your bags and, and posting one at a time. It's gonna be uh, be a thousand gold profit like every other day or every third day or something like that. That's gonna that's gonna add up. So uh, definitely an item to to craft if you have it. Outside of that, this profession is pointless for Shadowlands gold making. <laughs> Next up, we have blacksmithing, one of the um, the really good armor professions. It's a little hard to to look at the the profits right here. We can take a look at because uh, we'll have to like add the the chain dial stuff. So if you look at say the shadow steel greaves. We can see that um, they have a crafting cost of about four and a half thousand if you include the crafter's mark of the chain dial, and they're selling for about 10k. So that's an absolutely fantastic recipe. Um, it'll be a little bit different across these. Some of these are going to be profitable. Most of these are going to be quite profitable, I assume. Uh, and then some of them are are uh, are not. When I looked at the breastplate earlier, that was not showing so much. But we're looking at like about five, five seven, five six seven k profit per shadow steel. Um, item level 230 piece, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, if we look at the uh, Crafters Mark III stuff, that's also showing a profit, about 700 gold here of a 1200 gold crafting cost and 2k value. That's also very, very good. So definitely Crafters Mark II, chained all gear for blacksmithing, looking real good. Um, but the cream of the crop is, of course, the legendaries. We're going to look at uh, Shadow Steel Rank 4, Shadow Steel Greaves, or Shadow Gas Greaves, I should say. 20,000 gold crafting cost, and they're selling for 29,000. 30% profit margin, actually, no, 50% profit margin, and 9,000 profit per item. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, we can add the vestige and take a look at that, and it's going to be much thinner. So, hilariously, it's better to sell the rank fours. They're, they are selling for a larger raw profit. This one is selling for 40,000, and it has a crafting cost of about 33,000, just giving you six and a half thousand gold in profit so just a regular rank four <laughs> is uh, is better <laughs> hilariously but uh but yeah definitely the greaves is one of the best items in the game well, one of the best legendaries in the game um personally i keep all rank sixes in play but uh it's not as good for a lot of the the slots that overlap with um, with um, with domination sockets, such as the shoulders, actually showing pretty good profit here. Um, but uh, but yeah, I like to keep them all in in stock if I can, and uh, they're all looking quite profitable. Uh, most at least the ones I looked at right now. There might be some, uh, probably going to be some recipes that aren't as profitable on your round. It's going to vary a little bit. Depends on your competition and what people are doing, how many people are leveling res recipes. All that jazz. 
But overall, legendaries from, from blacksmithing are still doing really well for me. All right, jewel crafting. This one is profitable. No, no getting around that. Um, right now, of course, necklaces is not, not looking so good on the rank fours, sadly. Um, they are a little, can be a little bit hit and miss. Uh, you might also need to do some, uh, some work on pricing your essences, depending on how you're acquiring them. If you are using significant amounts of prospecting, they might be cheaper than the numbers show right here, particularly for the shadow gas necklace. If you're, for instance, doing a lot of lithium or lacerite prospecting, um, then they might be effectively cheaper. Um, sort of the same thing for the Shadow Gas Ring, not showing much profit, but I'm generally selling these, even if they're not showing a profit here. They usually sell out throughout the week. Um, so um, so we'll see how uh, how it goes. It looks like I might have to do some, some work on the pricing here, because I'm guessing that a large portion of this is going to be uh, because it's overvaluing the uh, essences. Um, if we're looking at the other thing you will obviously want to look out here, is the various uh, the jewelry? Um, someone has done some very heavy undercutting on the item level 230 stuff on my realm just recently, so it's not looking too too hot. Uh, the uh, item level 200 stuff is also looking pretty good, um, with about 200 gold profit of a 400 gold crafting cost. That's pretty good, uh, and then. Hopefully, someone's bought out the guy who was undercutting all of these down to 3,000 gold because they are. There's no way you're making gold at 3,000 gold, so we'll see if they quit or not. Uh, that's definitely a uh, my, my realm specific thing, so I doubt you see that on every realm. And I have been getting sales just yesterday at about 5,000 gold, which is typically where these have been selling. Uh, which is about uh, 1,000, 1,200 gold uh, profit off over my 3,800 crafting cost, as you can see at the bottom. Of, uh, of the tooltip, so jewel crafting is still looking really good. The sale rate is absolutely amazing. As you can see, I've been selling these in, in absolutely huge quantities, selling 400 uh, deadly rings, sold 400 oxide rings, probably sold about 400 of all of them. Fantastic. Uh, I love uh, jewel crafting. The overall sale rate is really, really good, um, even if the profit is not that hot right now on my realm. All right, next up we have enchanting. And um, as we can see, there's a lot of uh, green entries here. So that means that you can make some profit with enchanting. But what you can also see is that generally, like the green numbers here are, are rare, fairly low for the most part. So you're not making much gold um, per item. The only th ones you're making much gold are items that have recently been reset, like the Eternal Intellect here, which is usually selling for about 130 gold. But someone has reset this up to 400 gold, giving you an actual re meaningful profit margin. The same thing with the eternal stats, usually selling for a lot less. So for the most part, you're making something like 30 to 50 gold per enchant in profit, which is just uh, very unspectacular. And that's the main reason why I don't spend time on enchanting outside of the enchanted materials. It's profitable, but it's just such small numbers that um, unless it's the only thing you can afford to craft, then it's not really worth it. I've been doing this on my NA Zero to Hero challenge, and there it's worth it because I don't really didn't really have capital. And crafting these when you don't have much capital capital is absolutely fantastic. It gives you something that sells um, at a nice clip, and that you can keep uh, and you get access to a lot of different items that you can keep on the auction house, and that's pretty good. Uh, but outside of that, enchanting not really a way to to make any meaningful amounts of gold, sadly. All right, inscription. This one is uh, a little bit interesting because you pretty much can't use the uh, <laughs> you can't use the in-game uh, default profits here if you're milling your own inks. So what we can see if we hover over this, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's going to be TSM auctioning. Uh, oh, well, actually, it's behind my face, but whatever. Um, it's the min, normal, and max prices. The minimum price is 200 gold, so that's about my crafting cost is about 160 gold then for these. And most of them are selling for less than that, so missives not really worth it at all. Um, I'm missing the Vantus rune recipes because my inscribe is level 50, so he doesn't have access to raiding, so I can't really get those. Uh, I'm assuming they'd probably be profitable. Uh, the Tome of the Still Mind is also showing a profit. Uh, of 50 gold, which is pretty nice because this one 
at least has high sale rate, but you're probably going to have to spend uh, quite some time reposting to, to get any of the sales. Um, overall, the potential here is quite low. I haven't checked Dark Moon cards in a long time. Um, they should still be selling. They're going to be the best catch-up options, but I doubt that they're going to be making significant pro significant pro profit with those. We can take a quick look, though, um, at the Dark Moon, Dark Moon decks. So yeah, actually these should be quite, they should be profitable. Um, looking at these numbers, I'm guessing these are profitable. I'm looking at the quantities. I'm also seeing that the amount of competition here is not going to be particularly high. So this might be something to uh, get back into actually. We'll have to do the math on this. Um, if you haven't, I have, I do have some blog posts about this that you can check out. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description for, uh, for the calculations you need to figure out if Darkmoon cards and Darkmoon decks are profitable because it's a little bit more involved. It's not just uh, open TSM and look at the prices, but uh, I do have everything you need. So we'll, uh, you'll find that in the description and um, that'll be good for you. All right, so we're on to my last crafter and the last two professions. So first up, leatherworking. Um, leatherworking, I've personally had very bad success with le leatherworking lately. Uh, there's some recipes that are good, the Bone Shatter Gauntlets, for instance. As you can see, they are showing a nice profit at rank 4 at 7,000. Uh, but the leather stuff has overall been quite underwhelming. And as you can see, there's not much profit, about 3,000, which is just about 10% on the uh, rank 4 Umbra Hide Leggings. Um, and negative profit on a lot of the tread or, or a lot of the slots that overlap with um, or barely any profit on a lot of the slots that overlap with um, what are they called the shards of domination if you look at uh, if we add some vestiges it's also going to be not particularly impressive look at this two and a half thousand gold profit on the ember hide legs um, and um, the gauntlets a little better at eleven thousand this is actually a meaningful recipe and something that's been working well for me. Greaves should also be slightly better here. Um, yeah, okay, that was pretty bad. So uh, leatherworking has definitely been a, a, a mixed bag for me in terms of the legendaries lately. Um, if we take our attention over to to the uh, chain dial gear, it's um, looking okay. You're making a profit. Uh, this is pretty good, 1700 gold. That's not bad um, off of a... 5,000 gold crafting cost. That's um, pretty solid. That's more than uh, significantly more than than 20%, up to 25. So that's uh, that's something to be relatively happy about. Um, should be similar across the the board here. It's maybe even better for some slots. If you turn our attention to Crafters Mark three, that's not showing so much. Um, so that might not be worth it. Um, it does depend on on the Crafters Mark crafting cost as well. Um, you definitely have to check exactly what combinations you have available to you and make sure that TSM is using the correct pricing because you might be able to get cheaper um, cheaper crafters marks from uh, from some professions. Of course, if you're a tailor or another worker, then it's unlikely because the tailoring stuff is generally quite expensive. Um, well, at least the vestiges. I don't remember uh, how it looks on the crafters mark. They might be better. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you can make gold but this is not on the level the item level 200 and 230 gear from leatherworking it's not on the level of blacksmithing and jewel crafting which is doing really really well for those two two item types at least for me personally so lastly we have uh, tailoring and as i said earlier on the leatherworking stuff the uh, crafters marks from tailoring are generally quite expensive we're looking at 5,000 gold for the for the Crafters Mark here of the Chain Dial, and as much as 1,000 gold for the Crafters Mark III, which is very expensive compared to most other professions. Uh, don't even get me started on the Vestige, which is more than double the cost of most other Vestiges, because Lightless Silk is just incredibly expensive. Um, so uh, what do we know with the tailoring? What I know with tailoring is that the sale rate is absolutely amazing. The prices are not that high. Greenveld Cape selling for 10,000 gold, 7,000 gold crafting costs. That's nice. Um, two and a half K. That's very nice profit margin. It sells really fast. Uh, as you can see, I am currently sold out, and I've probably been for a while because I uh, I need to increase my crafting size. Um, this one is using the incorrect uh, vestige of origins because by default TSM will use the vestige from the same profession, 
I never craft my vestiges with tailoring because they're too expensive. I craft them with leatherworking, so my actual crafting cost is going to be lower than this. Um, my actual crafting cost for a vestige, if we pop back over here, is 13,600, so that means that we have to sub subtract 13,000 from what it's doing here. Um, if you're not sure how you implement this in TSM, there's uh, another link in the description for how to set up to get the correct or to get it to use the vestige that you want it to use. Based on, on your crafters, I've written a post on that on the blog, so just head over there and uh, you'll get the custom sources and the operations you need to, to get that working. Then we have the mittens as well. Uh, this is negative 5,000 profit according to TSM. We know that I'm actually crafting these for 13,000 13, gold less, so this is actually profitable. Um, at rank 6, Grimveil Mittens, we can also see that oh, I actually have some of these. Uh, I have some of these. The cape is definitely the best recipe for me. Um, mittens and uh, pants also doing really well. Probably sold out. I actually have rank 4 pants. Never mind. They're not... Uh, I should be selling them. Probably just haven't been undercutting enough. Next up, the, the armor. So we'll start with the trousers because they are in a non sharded domination slot, which means that this is one of the slots you really want. Um, once again, we're getting a little bit bamboozled by the crafter's mark. We can get the crafter's marks a little bit cheaper than this. Um, but there's not much profit on the rank 3 here. Uh, if we go to crafter's mark 3, um, there's actually this is actually very profitable, uh, crafter's mark 3. Because uh, my actual crafter's mark 3 cost is about 600 gold from, from leatherworking, I believe. It might even be cheaper. Which means that I'm actually doubling my money on these Shadowized Tracers at item level 200, so that's really, really good. We can take a look at some of these others. We can see that some of these are going to be profitable at uh, item level 230, probably, and some of them are not. Um, you'll have to check your own, but once again, the profit margin is lower than, um, than blacksmithing, but it's still not bad, and definitely a market to be in if you can. Uh, there's some, some nice profits to be had here, for sure. So, that was it. All of the professions done. So the overall, the big overall trend is the fact that legendaries are a lot less profitable right now, which is really good. Uh, well, it's actually really bad, of course, because it means we're making less gold, but it also means that we can have more fun testing other markets. It's now actually worth it to spend your time doing something else than just cancel scanning legendaries. I think that the main, the main markets to look into is going to be crafted item level 230 gear and crafted item level 200 gear. Those are both going to be really good as we went through even on my high pop realm most of these are profit margins from 30% uh, and upwards which is great for a crafted uh, market and I'm not seeing as much competition at all when I do fire and forget scans and I'm just crafting item level 230 gear with just blacksmithing and jewel crafting I'm getting about 100-150k in sales every time I run a post scan of just all of the items that I have in stock um, so yeah, that's absolutely a fantastic market to be in. Uh, legendaries are of course still good, but do make sure that you're getting the correct pricing with Vestiges of Origins if you're doing rank 6. I would completely ignore rank 5, I didn't look at it at all this video. They are... The value proposition of buying a rank 5 legendary is just so bad, I don't think people are really ever gonna do it. They'd rather... I know I'd rather just wait another week and get go straight to rank 6. That extra, like, uh, whatever item level just isn't going to move the needle in any meaningful fashion. So, um, so yeah. That's it. It's it's sort of fun. I actually really like that legendaries are worse, because it means I can spend more time uh, branching out, which I always really love of having, like, the, the gold-making empire. Um, so, hopefully, you're enjoying the markets right now, and they're treating you kindly. Um, yeah. If you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and you'll get notified whenever I post more market review videos or talk about anything related to how gold making is going right now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye, guys.